The world of Hyrule is a very dynamic place. Throughout your adventure, you'll notice that several aspects of the land will change the further you progress. Weak red enemies will start turning blue, basic weapons will start transforming into more powerful variants, and these weapons will even start gaining modifiers that will alter and buff the characteristics. Since there's really no clear explanation on how or when these things all change, a lot of players assume that this weapon and enemy progression is tied to things like main story progression, through shrines and divine beasts. But in reality, the game determines all these factors through a hidden rank up system, where killing monsters nets imaginary experience points to level up, and our current level of experience dictates what new tiers of monsters and weapons spawn in the world. Given the fact that this system is completely hidden from player sight, figuring out the exact details behind this system would be nearly impossible by itself. But fortunately, all of this research and discovery was made possible due to a data mine by user Leo at Lino, which was used in the formation of this project. But the system isn't as cut and dry as you would expect, as there are a lot of hidden rules in play that dictate things like which enemies level up, as you'll still see base red variants amongst the stronger ones in the late game. So today, we will be going over all the details behind getting experience points in Breath of the Wild, how it contributes to changing the world itself, and even figuring out how one can abuse a system to maximize a player's level to get the strongest weapons and items as soon as possible. With that all the way, let's get into the hidden ranking system of Breath of the Wild. When you start off a new save in this game, everything will be at its base state. All the enemies and weapons will not be upgraded past their initial placements, until you start killing them off to get your first experience points, which stay cumulative throughout the entire rest of your playthrough, despite being hidden from player view. Although the amount of experience varies between what you kill, most of the early game and weaker enemies actually don't grant any experience points, and are not included in this level of process. These include Keys, Choo Choo, Octoroks, any of the red and blue tier enemies excluding bosses, along with any of the other enemies that would fit in this weaker category. This explains why most of the world's changes don't start until after you clear out the Great Plateau, as these weaker enemies make up the majority of what you always see in the early game. However, just about everything above these guys will contribute to gaining XP points for leveling up with the lowest being Wiz Robes, which grant a mere 5 points per kill, and a list a few odd ones past that for reference, Black Picoblins grant 15, Silver Moblins grant 35, Guardians are 50, Silver Lytles are 120, and Blight Cannons give a total of 300 each. The point here is that every enemy beyond the basic variants grants XP when defeated, and if you want a clearer understanding of all the enemy point values in this game, feel free to screenshot this image or get the link to it in the description to use at your own convenience. These experience points are granted to Link whenever an enemy dies, regardless of how they perish, so this could be through a direct melee attack or even any form of environmental damage, like drowning an enemy in water or watching them burn in some fire. It doesn't even have to be Link that kills them, as long as he die within your near proximity, then it counts as a kill. The only exception being banishing an enemy with an ancient arrow, as this attack does not count as a kill, but more so in a disappearance, I suppose. However, there is one unique rule set into play when it comes to gaining XP, and that is that every enemy on the list is only able to grant XP a total of 10 times each, and any more kills of each type will not grant any more. This makes grinding out enemies to level up nearly impossible, as your character can only truly rank up by exploring the world around and finding new enemies to kill for this reason. But with this info on gaining XP in mind, let's actually get into what these experience points do, and how they can affect and change properties in the world. So as we explained earlier, your cumulative XP count affects two main things throughout the game enemy progression and weapon progression, which includes the modifiers. But we will start by just explaining the enemy progression as this information will carry over pretty well to the latter. So in this world, there are 5 types of enemies that can be tiered up throughout your playthrough. Bacoblins, Moblins, Lizalfos, Yiga, and Lynels. And depending on how many cumulative points you have, you will cross new point thresholds that will upgrade the base variants of some of these enemies to stronger versions. Lynels are probably the best example of this, because they all start off as red variants when you start the game, but as soon as you cross the first Lynel point threshold of 2786, they'll start turning blue, at 4000 XP, they'll start turning white, and at 6000, they'll start turning silver. So it's pretty simple to understand. 
but the other ones like Picoblins are a bit trickier, as despite the scaling process being observable with some of them, others still seem to hold their weaker forms throughout the entire game. Let's take this Picoblin camp by the Dueling Peaks for an example, and observe it at its base state, where there will be one red Picoblin and two blue Picoblins on the ground. Once the first Picoblin threshold of 286 has been met, one of the red variants will turn blue, while the rest stay the same. Then, once 1143 points have been met, that one blue one will turn black, and finally, at 2286 points, that black one will turn silver, with the rest completely unaffected. The reason why only one of them was ranking up is that every single tierable enemy and object in the world has a special parameter attached to it called scaling, and whether or not it's set to true or false dictates if the thing will abide by the experience point ranking system. In this example, the two blue Bacoblins that didn't upgrade had their scaling parameter set to false, while the one red one that did upgrade had their scaling parameter set to true. If you want a better look at the scaling parameters for each enemy, there is a Breath of the Wild object map available that shows you the locations for all enemies and objects in the game, and if you click on them, you can see if the scaling parameter is set to true or false. And I'll have a link to this in the description below, because it's a really great tool to use, even beyond for the scaling mechanic. This also explains why the one red Lionel in Zoro's Domain will always stay red and never rank up like the rest of them, as it's the only Lionel in the world with its scaling parameter set to false. And this entire system also applies to the weapon scaling as well, as just about every single weapon can be tiered up to stronger variants assuming that their scaling parameters are set to true. For an example, Boko Clubs get upgraded to Spike Boko Clubs, and Spike Boko Clubs eventually get upgraded to the Dragon Bone ones, as soon as their respective experience point margins are met. This scaling system even applies to how these weapons can get modifiers as well, such as Attack Up or Durability Up, as each weapon type has two set thresholds where they will start getting modifiers applied, and the order goes Base Weapon, Weak Modifier, Strong Modifier, then the next one, and so on. I'll include a link to the spreadsheet that goes over the exact point values required to start finding the modified and upgraded tiers of each weapon, if you ever care to use it as a reference at some point. But let's talk a little more about the modifiers themselves, since a large amount of people are still confused on how exactly they work. The weak ones we mentioned are the white and blue colored ones, and the strong ones are the yellow color ones, and the exact one that your weapon could get is randomized in each category. If you notice, Attack Up, Durability Up, and Shield Guard Up come in both strong and weak variants, but the yellow ones are always more potent, featuring higher stats. For an example, a Royal Broadsword with a weak Attack Up can have anywhere from 6 to 12 extra attack, while a yellow Attack Up will have anywhere from 13 to 25. These number ranges are unique and fixed to each weapon, but the value you get within that range is completely randomized, which I'll include a link to the spreadsheet of all possible modifier ranges in the description below for those of you interested. However, if you are ever unhappy with the modifier of a weapon that you get after an enemy encounter, you could always reload that save right before you fought the enemy, and its modifier will be changed, which is really helpful when fighting Lytles and trying to get the best weapons. The only other thing to keep in mind about the scaling system is that some items in the world will eventually become extinct because of it, specifically the critical hit modifier as it doesn't have a yellow variant, and most of the base and mighty tier Lionel weapons, as the Lionels they are tied to will eventually tear up with their weapons and make them unobtainable. So with this entire rank up system in mind, a lot of players may use this information to grind through XP as much as possible in order to get the best weapons soonest. Although the enemies also level up to harder variants to match the more powerful weapons you get, these enemies also drop much better materials than the lower variants, making exploiting this level up system actually a good tactic without much of a cost to the game's difficulty itself. And fortunately, there are a lot of really good tactics to utilize in order to do this effectively. One would be to go guardian farming right after you leave the Great Plateau, as assuming you are decent enough with parrying these guys, you can easily get 500 points right off the bat just by killing 10 of them, which will be more than enough to unlock most of the modifiers for your low tier weapons. Another good tactic would be to try to go to the outer areas of Hyrule first, so you can take down all the black tier enemies that naturally spawn to get XP, unlike the red and blue ones that commonly appear near the beginning areas. And using the weapons you get from these black enemies, you can start taking down other bosses earlier like Maldugas, which also give 50 XP apiece for a total of 500 after the 10th kill. But perhaps one of the easiest ways of getting XP is by taking down the Blight Cannons, which grants a crazy 300 apiece. 
This is why a lot of players probably thought that the enemy and item progression was tied to your main story progress. But in reality, it's just that these bosses give out a crazy amount of XP that every kill is bound to change at least a few big things in the world. But speaking of this, there is actually one area in the game that works slightly differently, which is the Ancient Colosseum, as it's the only place in the entire map that tears its enemies based off Divine Beast completion and completely ignores the entire progression system we just went over. But because it works off a different tiering system, these items cannot have modifiers, so never go here late game to farm out things like Lionel weapons, as they will always be weaker for that fact. So before we wrap up everything in this video, there's only one little thing left that we need to go over, and that is how Master Mode can change its progression system. And honestly, it's not that complicated, because all Master Mode does is tear up every enemy in the world by one color, and the colors for each of these enemies in the point threshold get upped by one rank as well, which allows the silver ones to eventually become gold. There's no other changes in the world with the weaponry. So since a lot of the newfound tough enemies may start with really crappy weapons, it's best to find more creative ways to kill them in Master Mode that don't suck up all your weapons. But with that said, that is all the information I have to present today in this video. There were a lot of behind the scenes numbers and values to discuss, so I'll make sure to keep all these sources linked in the description below if you're curious on checking out the exact values behind this system. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already to support the channel, as I still have many more of these stats videos to come. Also, a huge thank you to my amazing patrons and YouTube members who help support the content. If you would like your name featured here for as little as a dollar a month, all the info can be found in the description below. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.